Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Earth Science Review Series. This is Unit 2. We are towards the end of the unit, and this video is going to be focusing on the four big picture topics on topographic maps and topographic profiles. So without further ado, here we go. So here's an example map. It says, base your answers to questions 1 through 3 on the topographic map below. Points A and B are reference points on the map. The triangle symbols show the highest elevations on Eagle Hill and Timoney Hill. Elevations are shown in feet. Now that's actually very, very important to know, that the elevations are shown in feet. Sometimes you might see, like on the bottom of this map, the contour interval is given to you. That means what each line goes up by. So it's in feet. The scale distance here is in miles, so that's something to immediately keep in the top of your head. Also over here is a compass, so that's also very important. If there is no unit on the map, check the top reading because 99% of the time it's going to tell you in there. Okay, so let's see what the three questions are. So the first one says, on the grid below, construct a topographic profile along line AB by plotting an X for the elevation of each contour line that crosses line AB. Connect the plotted X's with a smooth curved line to complete the profile. Points A and B have already been plotted for us. Okay, so we're going to make a profile on this map. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to AB right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this map here, and the first step for profiles is to make sure all my ISO lines on this map are labeled above the line that I have to draw. So we're essentially going to be holding up a piece of paper to this dotted line here, but I want to label all my ISO lines up here so I don't have to constantly be flipping the paper up and down in order to figure out what the height of those are. So watch how I do it. So this is the 600 line down here. Here's the 700 line. So that means this is 620. This is 640, this is 660, this is 680. And if I do the same process on this mountain, this is 620, 640, 660, 680. There's 700, so this is 720. So that way now I can label the lines on the top. So this line here, all the way on the left, above A, is part of the 680 line. So I'm just going to label it there. Then this one is 700. And this one is 660. And then this one here does not cross the dotted line, so I don't have to do that one. So this is 660 right here. This one's 680. This one is 700. And this one right here is 660. So now, when I cover my paper, I don't have to worry about that anymore. I actually forgot to label this 720 line, so we'll do that. So watch. So we're going to match the paper up. Make sure your paper is flat and even. I don't like to cover the actual line. Keep that a little visible. So it's flat. I smooth out my paper. I hold each side so it doesn't move. And now we're going to start by making one straight line down for A. And that's going to be 680. So we're going to label it 680. One straight line down for 700. Another line straight down for 720. Wherever the ISO line crosses the dotted line, we have to make a line for that. So here's another 720. The next one is 700, because it's still part of that 700 line. This one's going to be 680. Here's my 660. Notice how useful this is, the fact that these numbers are already there. This is a river. We don't account for that. We're only looking for the contour lines. 660 again, 680, 700, 700, 680, 660, and this is B. So what I like to do is I like to move my paper off when I'm done, and then I like to rematch it up. Make sure every line is perfect. So it lo looks like I did that pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our grid, and we're going to match it up. And as you could see, it's pretty good. Now, 
it is a little bit off the edge here. So that's okay. Right now, I think that's just the way that this sheet happened to print off the program. So on a test, it won't be, it'll be, it should be exact fit. Okay, so we're gonna start with A, and I'm gonna hold A on the Y axis right here. I'm gonna make sure through the whole process that this stays there. So A is 680, and if you slide up to 680, you could see that they already put that point there. So the next point is 700, so I'm gonna slide the whole paper up to 700, and I'm gonna put a little X right here, because they said they wanted X's. The next number is 720, so I'm gonna slide my whole paper up to 720, and put an X right above the 720. And I'm gonna repeat this process for every single number. So there's a 720, now we go back down to 700, Now we go down to 680. Now we go down to 660. Then we got another 660 right here. Then we go back up to 680. Then we go back up to 700. Then there's another 700. Then we go down to 680. And my last line, they, the last dot they plotted for us. So there we go. So to make sure I did this right, I'm going to count all my X's right now. Ready? Including the ones they plotted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So now I'm going to count my lines on my paper. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I match. All right, now we go here, back to the original map. Count all the lines that cross the dotted line. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Everything matches, so that means I did not miss anything. Now we have to connect the lines. So you should connect all the lines except where there's two dots on the same line that are next to each other. So watch, so we're going to connect these three. I'm not going to connect those two yet because there's two dots next to each other. I'm going to connect these four. Now there's another two dots that are next to each other, so we're going to skip those for right now. Connect, connect those three. And then we're going to connect these three. Okay, the ones on the same elevation that are next to each other, it's either going to be a peak or a valley. So in this case, this line's going up and this line's going up. So this is going to be a peak. Make sure with the peak that you're not touching the next contour line. You also don't want to make flat lines, so it's got to be a peak or a valley. Now the mountain comes down on this side, and the mountain comes down on this side, so this is going to be a valley. And then the mountain goes back up, and it's also going up on this side, so there's going to be another peak. And that's the finished profile. So this is the correct answer for this map. Okay. So now it says, number two, state a possible elevation for the top of Patriot Hill. So I'm going to go back to Patriot Hill. A possible elevation, oh, Patriot Hill is actually neither of those. It's the one down here. Possible elevation for the top of this hill. So like right in there. I'm going to first label all my contour lines. So this is 620. 640, 660, 680. So the way you figure out what that dot could be, you say to yourself, okay, what would the next contour line be if we were to draw one? So in this case, the next one would be 700, but it's not there. And this dot is not on the 680 line. So possible elevations for the top of Patriot Hill could be anywhere from 681 feet to 699 feet. It can't be 700 because then there would be a 700 line and it can't be 680 because then the dot would be on the line. So that's how you figure this out. This is called the minimum and this is called the maximum. So for the question it says a possible elevation. So any number between 681 and 699 would be good. So I'll pick 690 feet. Make sure you write the feet after that or else you're gonna get zero credit. Number three, identify the general direction towards Aurora Creek is flowing. So we're gonna go here. 
based on the contour lines, we could figure out the direction that Aurora Creek is flowing. And all you got to do is remember this. Contour lines bend upstream. That's the explanation. So if you look at these lines here, this line here, the ones that go over the creek, they bend as in the little pointy spot at the top points upstream, aka where the water came from. So if they ask you what direction it's flowing, this river would be flowing this way. So that direction is southeast. Another way you can know where it flows down towards is rivers, this is the second major piece of evidence, flow from high elevation to low elevation. They flow down mountains. You're never going to have a river that flows up the mountain. So if you look back at the map, it's going from the top of the mountain towards the bottom and it decreases in, in elevation. The last question that I wanted to go over real quick as a bonus is how do you identify steep or gentle slopes? So in order to identify a steep or gentle slope, you're going to go to your map. Here's what you're going to have to remember. Steep slopes equals the lines are close together, which also means it has a high gradient. So that's like a cliff, essentially. So if you can remember that, you'll know the opposite. Gentle slopes are when the lines are far apart and that would be a low gradient or like a flat area. So in this example, if I were to pick, I would say like maybe this, these two lines, this is flatter than these four lines. This is steep because there's more lines in a smaller area. This has less lines in a larger area. So this is a high gradient down here and this is a low gradient down here. If you understand these four major concepts, the profile, the possible elevations, minimum, maximum, the general compass direction for a river, and also steep or gentle slopes, you'll, no exaggeration, be able to answer about 200 different questions. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and contact me. Good luck, and I'll see you on the next one.